Hello garden friends and welcome to my channel, DK's Garden Oasis. I am Debbie. I garden in Zone 5B, Southwest Suburbs of Chicago, inspiring you to bloom, grow, and conserve in your garden. On today's video, I will be sharing how to winter sow the supplies that you need to start winter sowing, the benefits, and what is winter sowing. Make sure you stay till the end where I share a beautiful winter poem. So I've been winter sowing for about four years. The first two years, I just used the plastic milk or water jugs. And then last year, I did the water jugs. And also, I did the plastic bag method. Plastic bag method didn't really work for me. I don't know if it was it just warmed up too quickly but the little seedlings burnt and I think it was just too warm in the plastic bags uh, with the jugs you can open them and then also if you get a late frost you can also close those back up so this year I'm going to be doing the water or milk jugs again and then I'm going to be using a new method and I uh, happened to look online for different things that I could use and I found some fruit or vegetable plastic containers and I'll show you when I go downstairs what I'll be using but it has ventilation it has holes at the bottom and it's about five inches so I'm going to try that method this year. So what is winter sowing? It's a fun and easy way to start your seeds in a container that acts like a mini greenhouse. So what are the benefits? You don't need any special equipment or grow lights. There's no need to sterilize your seedling trays. There's no risk of the seedlings damping off and you don't need to harden off your seedlings because they are already exposed to the weather. Winter sowing allows mother nature to cold stratify your seeds naturally outside. There's no particular cutoff uh, time to put out those seeds and I'll show you when I go downstairs some of the time periods that you have to cold stratify it could be 10 days 20 days uh, 60 days or some are 120 and I'll show you that and that's how long you need to cold stratify so for the most part you don't need to water you do need to check them periodically if we don't get enough rain or snow and if you do see them pretty dried out you can just miss those once spring comes you put the containers in a sunny spot in the morning and a shade in the afternoon this will allow the soil to warm up and start germinating your seedlings but not dry out once the temperatures are consistently above 60 degrees you want to remove the lids and as I said before which probably happened with the plastic bags you need to make sure there's good ventilation and if it gets too hot to make sure those lids are off and it's in not direct sun. You can remove the seedlings when you have two sets of true leaves. I do have seeds in my refrigerator and I'm going to be trying another method that I'll be talking about in a future video uh, where you moisten a towel and put them in the freezer and that acts like cold stratification as well. So I'll be trying that method as well. So make sure you hit the subscribe and notification bell for those future videos. You can use all types of containers from milk or water jugs to two liter soda bottles or even takeout containers. You just have to make sure they have drainage holes or put drainage holes in them and there's enough that you can put at least, um, I, they say about two to four inches of soil. I try to go about four inches. So this year I decided to winter sow my cool flowers and my native perennials and annuals. Now you can plant vegetables as well, like lettuce, broccoli, and cabbage, or even herbs like lavender, mint, and dill. This year though, I'm only gonna be focusing on the cool flowers and the natives. So let's go down in my basement and I'll show you what I will be doing this year, my methods for winter sowing. We're down in my basement now and this is my grow room where I keep everything. As I said before, I have this rack for all of my seeds. I have a couple other ones that I'll be putting up soon when I really get seeds going, but this is my main one that I keep up year round and this was from Costco. I have lots of trays on the top of this and as you can see I started my milk jugs yesterday and I did six of them and then I'll be showing you two today and then I have temperature and humidity to make sure the basement is the right temperature for all my seedlings. 
I'm going to be putting up fans pretty soon to keep the air circulating and that makes stronger plants as well. And here is my other method and these are vegetable slash fruit con plastic containers and I'll show you a little closer when I bring the camera closer but it has holes in the uh, top and it also has some holes at the bottom as well so it can drain out. So I'm going to try this because this is probably close to three or four inches of soil and I'm going to give that a try. So I did two, four, six, eight, ten and I'm going to show you another two today. So I will bring the camera closer and I'll go through all the tools that you need and then I'll demonstrate two of them, um, actually three of them. I'll do two in milk jugs and two in the plastic containers, the fruit slash vegetable containers. So let me bring the camera closer. So now I am going to show you the supplies that you will need to winter sow. And um, again, there's lots of different methods that you'll see online. You can use plastic bins. There's all kinds of different methods, but I do the milk jug and then I try another method every year. I will be trying one other method, cold stratifying my seeds in my freezer slash refrigerator. And I'll show you that in a future video. So what you need milk jug or water jug these are water jugs and what you I'll show you what you need to do when we get started but milk jug or water jug here is the container that I'm going to be using this year it has holes at the top and then it has some slits in the bottom to, for drainage right here so I think these are perfect actually and then what I think I'm going to do I bought plenty of them I can put my tomatoes and all my vegetables in there here for my farmer's market. So dual purpose. So I have that as well. I wanted to show you these gloves. Um, gloves I may be using are pretty dirty but these come in a pack of four and I'll post that below. These are Atlas gloves. These are my most favorite gloves. They don't even feel like you're wearing them and they're very comfortable to garden in. So I buy a four pack every year. And this year I guess I um, I don't really need to because I have three that are still perfectly good. I do wash them. So they last at least one or two seasons. So those are my gloves. Of course, seeds. So I, again, I'm gonna be doing cool flowers and natives. So I'm gonna be doing these today. And let's see what else. So my little um, aluminum seed. So I put them in here so they don't have static electricity. They're easier to grab your seeds. A utility knife to cut the uh, milk jug. So duct tape and I did cut a piece today. So that's what else you need. I also have painter's tape and this I put on the containers as well. I'm not sure if they will stay on, so I did put it on the inside as well. So in the milk jugs, I just used these. And then for the plastic containers, I have some more little tags as well. I have scissors. I have your garden marker and this, I thought Again, most gardeners have uh, tried and failed using a Sharpie and eventually it fades. This does not fade, so get yourself a garden marker. I usually just get a pack of 10, but they last a long time, so garden marker. And the oh, uh, hole punch, and I'll show you what we'll be doing with those. And then um, some twist ties, and I'm gonna be doing a di little bit different method with the milk jugs, closing it, so twist ties. And then I just have some towels and spray bottle. What I used this time was from ProMix seed starting mix. Now um, I haven't seen that people don't use the seed starting mix. Uh, they use more potting soil but I this is a little bit heavier so sometimes the seed starting mix is too lofty but this is what I'm going to try this year. The ProMix and then I mixed it together. I'm just going to add some water today. And then I put a little bit of green sand in. 
I've been hearing a lot of people putting this in their soil as well. So I'm putting, these are some nutrients. So green sand, micro, mycorrhiza. This is like a fungi for the soil. Again, another nutrient. And then I always cover things with vermiculite. And this just uh, prevents algae growth and also keeps moisture in. So that's what else I have here. I'm going to switch to the other camera and we'll get started on those other methods. Okay, we're going to get started with our winter sowing. Before we do, I wanted to give you a quick update on my Lysianthus. About 7 to 10 days after I uh, did these soil blocks, I have Lysianthus babies. I don't know if you can see these. They're super tiny try to get them up here so you could possibly see them but they are growing so check out that video I did buy some more packages I love Lysianthus they're just a beautiful beautiful flower so this is the soil that I mixed yesterday and I, one more thing before we get started I'm going to show you what I already put in the milk jugs and uh, the plastic containers so in the milk jugs I did Love in a Mist Green Marbles. I did Larkspur Sublime Mix. Bells of Ireland. Luplurum. Bachelor's Button Mix Colors and Black Hollyhock. Now some of these are perennials. Um, this is a perennial, the Hollyhock. And if you look at it, um, this is a biennial. So that, that just means that every other year it drops seeds and the other ones, uh, once they flower, they die, drop seeds, and then you get more the next year. So this one does not say to cold stratify, but I know people that do it. I'll try to find one that does show it. Most of the native plants do show cold stratification. So here's my ones that I put in the plastic containers. And this is Button Blazing Star and it's a liatris and if you look at this it says seeds germinate after 60 days of cold moist stratification so again um, it's going to be outside in the conditions and once they grow i will transplant them and they will already be hardened off and i will put them in containers at that point so this was 60 days that you need it either in the freezer, refrigerator, or outside. So that's the 60 days. I have showy goldenrod, and this one shows 60 day as well, stratification, or you fall. So I didn't have these seeds for the fall, but I will be trying to put some out this fall. I have columbine, and this one needs 60 days. I believe I chose all the ones that take a little bit more time. I think I have 30 and 20 and maybe a few tens in the refrigerator right now that I'll be showing you that other method. This is New Jersey Tea, and this one shows 60 days as well. Big Leaf Aster, and this one says uh, 60 days on the front right here of uh, cold stratification. So I already did those and then I will get started with the ones that we're going to do today. So I have one of the milk jugs with some water because I'm sure this dry dried out from yesterday. So I'm going to just make it moist so it sticks together. And this is just for my vermiculite. And again, this is just the ProMix soil that I'm using. And I'm also put some green sand in and some mycorrhiza in the soil. I'm gonna try to boost up the nutrients in the soil. I really do like to do winter sowing, not only because 
I can get started and you're kind of craving doing seeds in the winter, but also that you don't really have to do anything to take care of them. Maybe once in a while go outside and give it a little bit of water, but they're great. You don't take up a lot of room. Definitely need drainage in the bottom of your milk jugs. There's four spots that I just take the utility knife and just poke a hole. And then I also poke some holes at the top. So here, here, ooh, a little tough there. All right. And then what I do is, just so that I can stay straight because I have a tendency of going crooked, I take my marker and I draw a line. You don't want to cut here because this is your hinge. So you just make your line. Okay. Take that utility knife. What I do is I get it started. I don't trust myself with a utility knife. So I've got it started right here. Take my scissors and cut all the way around. And remember, do not cut past this little hinge. And you want it, you want it to look like this. I'm gonna cut a little bit more on this side because I need a little bit more of a hinge. Cut a little bit more and there we have it a little hinge so I'm gonna put this down I'm gonna be putting in fever few this is magic single I'm gonna be putting this one in this milk jug and normally it says so eight to ten weeks before tr um, transplanting in either spring or fall so uh, we don't have I'm in zone 5b so we need to plant in the spring, so I'm getting this a head start. I will be make, putting some in soil blocks, and I'm going to be putting some in the milk jugs to get them started. So these look like very, very tiny seeds, so all I'm going to do is sprinkle it. You can't even see it, I'm sure. They're very, very, very tiny. Okay, so I'm not even going to pour these out because I'm afraid I will lose them. So I'm gonna uh, write what it is. And this is, I like to put where it's from. So this is Johnny's. And this is Magic Single. Magic Single. And I'm not gonna put the date on this one because I wanna reuse these. Possibly not these, because these are wooden. Um, and then I want to get my gloves back on. All right, and then I fill it to the top. So you just put all the soil in. extremely cold this week it's definitely winter weather um, not so much snow we got a little bit of snow but it's definitely a little chilly out there I think the high is maybe uh, 20s and low is like 7 so a little little breezy out there so these are gonna go out today and I'll show you a picture at the end where I where I have these all right so take off my gloves again put my tag. I put, uh, just in case for some reason that the marker comes off, I want to make sure I have a tag in there. So then what I do is I take, I want to make sure I have my vermiculite handy. You probably won't be able to see these seeds going down in, on the soil. Um, let me see if they need to be covered. They say, let's see, gently press the seeds into the medium. So no, not really. So I'm gonna just 
surface sew these and then put some vermiculite over it. Yeah, they're very tiny. Holy moly. And of course, some are sticking. Here they go. Some are sticking to the wax paper. I got them all. I, I'm just going to put the vermiculite right over it. So we'll cover it up. And then what you do is you mist it a little bit. Just to, not too much that it makes the seeds go all over. You just want to damp it so that it kind of has contact with the soil. So what you're going to do is you're going to start with the duct tape, that side, the hinge, the one hinge side. Cover it up. little bit short. Um, I don't think it's going to be a problem. It's just got a little bit that I, that I could have made it just a little bit bigger. So then from here I'm going to again write what it is. And this was Johnny's Magic Fever view. And today's date is the 1st of February. Wow, February already. Okay. And that's all there is to it for that one. So this one's ready to go outside. Okay, so again, what you're going to do is make some holes at the bottom. at the top. Ventilation and some moisture could go in there and it'll go through the top. Make sure you don't keep the lid on. I did forget to mention that before. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take my pen to kind of guide us. started and I have to make my scissors and cut the rest of the way. Everything is the same here. It's just instead of duct tape, I'm trying something new just to see. I think this would be a good thing, especially in the spring if you want to open it up. I, you know, if you take off the duct tape, you're going to need to put all new duct tape. I don't know if it's going to re-stick. So you have your hole punch and I'm going to make holes on either side spilling out a little bit of water here. So make holes on either side. Try to line those off so they're even. So I do about four. Everything is the same as far as planting, so I'll put my gloves back on.
instead of putting duct tape, this is what we're gonna do. Four twisties. So if I was to do this again, um, I would do the holes after you put the soils in, soil in so you could see where to put it. All right, so those two are done. And so for some reason, my video stopped. So I'm going to show you the plastic container method again, but it's really easy. So you have your plastic container, it has holes on the top, holes at the bottom to drain, and you just take your soil, and I think I'll probably have just enough for this last one. At least I hope so. Maybe not, maybe a little shy. This is extremely easy. I hope this works because I will be doing this a lot more. You can not only start seeds in here, but uh, when I do the farmer's market, I can reuse these, clean them out and reuse them. But Labelia, and this one is 60 days of cold stratification as well, so. And these are very small seeds as well, so I, but there's quite a few of them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you uh, this one and then I am going to plant in two of them. So, they're extremely small. Yeah, I have plenty for another one. So I'm just going to show you this one. So I'm going to put, um, as far as planting instructions, it says, Let's see how far um, needs. Seeds are very small, need light to germinate. So again, all I'm gonna do is put some vermiculite over it. I am covering the seeds, but I just wanna Make sure that the moisture level stays, and um, with the Lysianthus, it's the same way, but they do get the light. So then you just spritz them. And as I was saying before the video cut out, I am getting a, getting a different water bottle that doesn't have this problem when it goes, when you don't have it level, it doesn't want to spray. So that'll be nice to get an actual nice mister. And I will be getting a tag. And this one is Prairie Moon Nursery Gray Blue Lobelia. And I just stick that in there just in case the duct tape comes off of this. And then what I do is I take some blue painter's tape and I also write it on the outside with the date. So it's uh, Prairie Moon Nursery 
and it's great blue lobelia. And the date is 2-1-23. So that is it. I'm going to do one more and that will be it for today. I need to get some more milk jugs, but I will be continuing to make more of these. Um, I have quite a few natives that I want to plant. So I can see the soil right here. Um, so it has plenty of room to drain. So that is it for my winter sowing. So give it a like and comment below if you've ever winter sowed or you would like to give it a try this year. In the next couple weeks, I will be starting my cool flowers and also pre-sprouting my ranunculus and anemones. So again, make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bells for all those videos coming up. Now I'd like to share that beautiful poem about winter. Thanks for watching and happy gardening. Bye-bye.